Happy chemicals don't last. They're quickly metabolized, and you may feel like something is wrong when a happy chemical spurt ends, even if nothing is wrong. That's because your brain pays more attention to its cortisol alarm when it's not masked by happy chemicals. Cortisol is nature's threat signal. It makes you feel like you will die if you don't do something fast. Cortisol promotes survival by motivating action to prevent harm. When a child touches fire for the first time, cortisol creates a sense of urgency that pulls their hand out of the fire. Neurons connect when cortisol flows, which turns on the bad feeling sooner the next time you get near a fire. Cortisol pathways protect you from having to touch a hot stove twice. Anything relevant to past pain turns on your threatened feelings. Cortisol works by making you feel so bad that you do what it takes to make it stop. When a gazelle smells a lion, it does what it takes to relieve the threatened feeling, even though it would rather keep eating. If a gazelle ignored its cortisol alarm, it would not live to reproduce. Natural selection built a brain that prioritizes bad feelings. But how can a gazelle escape the threatened feeling? It can't rid the world of lions. It may even see the lion who ate its child when it goes to the water hole. Gazelles do not expect absolute safety because hunger is always triggering their cortisol too. They just do what it takes to distance themselves from the smell of danger. Your cortisol is triggered when you get a whiff of anything related to your cortisol past. The sense of threat feels so real that you can't believe it's just a chemical triggered by an old neural pathway. You urgently want to make it stop, but there's no clear way to do that. You try to ignore the bad feeling, but it keeps commanding your attention because that's the job it's designed to do. It's easy to see why people are so tempted to mask their cortisol with happy chemicals, even when they do it in ways that threaten them more in the long run. We are not threatened by lions, so it's interesting to know that cortisol is also triggered by disappointment. Imagine you're a lion and the prey you're chasing gets away. Your cortisol alarm sounds when expectations of reward are disappointed. The bad feeling tells a lion to give up, which promotes survival, because chasing a gazelle you can't catch leads to starvation. Cortisol tells you when to stop investing in an unrewarding choice. Social disappointment triggers cortisol. When a monkey is snubbed by its grooming partner, cortisol tells it to avoid that individual and find a new grooming partner. Social alliances are essential for reproductive success, so survival depends on realistic feedback, not on feeling good every minute. You are not consciously focused on reproductive success, but your brain is inherited from mammals who treated social support as a matter of life and death. Your mammal brain alarms you with a threatened feeling when you see a potential threat to your social support. Monkeys focus on external threats, but the big human cortex can construct internal threats. We are aware of our own mortality, but you don't know what will kill you, so your threat detector scans everything. The human capacity to anticipate threats helps us meet needs and avoid harm, but it also leaves us with a lot of threatened feelings. When you plug a survival-seeking mammal brain into a human cortex that understands its long-term survival prospects, you get a contraption that can terrorize itself. Cortisol stays in your body longer than happy chemicals. It takes two hours to metabolize, and all that time, your threat detector is on high alert. Your big cortex is good at finding evidence of potential threat when it looks, and that triggers more cortisol. You can end up in a bad loop. Fortunately, you can stop the cycle by taking a break once your cortisol is triggered. Distraction is popular because it works. Two hours of distraction after a cortisol surge can free you from actions you might later regret. Of course, this doesn't mean you should ignore your cortisol. You need it to make good decisions about when to invest energy 
and when to retreat. But our threatened feelings are not a perfect decision-making guide since they're based on old cortisol pathways. It's hard to believe that old pathways have so much power. So that is the subject of our next episode. I'll see you there.